Happy New Year resolution. How you doing today, Chuck? Doing good, Lori. And again, getting started here, we're a little late. It's the end of January, but uh, if you haven't had a chance to make the New Year's resolutions yet, I think it's time to do it. So if you go ahead and make me the presenter, we'll kind of we'll kind of embellish on what Lori has started here and do get you us make a in New Year's the resolution, Chuck. I I do, do have did you one. Make yeah, a New Year's get, resolution? Get, get my daughter married <laughs> off here. We've got to so you know survive the wedding. That's um, we have a wedding in the in the family this uh, spring. So, but again, what we're trying to do is to make your use of your aceware better, faster, stronger. And that's what we all ought to be doing. And the goal being to be able to leave home at five or leave your work at five o'clock and go home to the family and and not not kick the kids or the spouse or the dog. So, anyway, what are we going to try to do today? We want to get input from you. One of our wish lists is always is how do we get input from you guys who are in the trenches as to how can we make Aceware work better for you, student manager, Aceweb, next, whatever we're working on, make it better for you. We're talking about implementing those wishes, how we go about do that, um, getting some input from you on what are the things you're looking for, um, and we're then we'll talk about some modules to add to your wish list. Again, uh, we continue, because of suggestions, add lots of new features, and we want to make sure everybody knows that they're out there, and if you don't have them and you think your system could benefit from them, um, you can add them to your system. Some of those are just ones that you need to implement, others are maybe a fee for, and we can talk about that when we get there. So that's what we're about, adding something to the wish list. A couple of different ways to do it. One obvious is tell your tech. Uh, this is our Christmas uh, get together, or I guess not Christmas, but our 2015 retreat, and that's the entire Motley crew. So if you've got something that you'd like your system to do, let your tech, tell your tech, ask your tech. Certainly the other thing is call Chuck, you know, you know, either call, email, or of course, go to the conference and get a chance to personally lobby, if you would, for your particular bug. And again, it's not that we, uh, we always are looking for ideas. We love to think that we know all there is to know about CE and software, but we don't. So you just need to tell us if there's something going on uh, within Student Manager, within AceWeb, uh, whether it's the way something's working or the way something's not working or a brand new feature, let us know. So again, it's all about communication. So uh, how do you put it on the wish list? The other way to do it is to go to the forum, the AceWare forum. Again, we've talked about this a number of times. Let me kind of bring it up here and get to the website. Hang on, guys. Website. Oh, I always struggle with where we are with uh, the website. On, okay, we're here. Lori, did the screen refresh and survive that? It did. It did. All right, so under customers, we have the forum. And again, in terms of logging into the forum, you can go and look at things there uh, without logging in. But if you want to add something to the wish list, you will need to register. But then you could go in and put it up on the wish list. Uh, so again, that's one way to do it. And certainly the other one is, as we said, call your tech, tell your tech, tell a note to Lori or I. Put a note on the text today in the text box. And we'll ask that later. Um, Take a survey. We have in the past sent surveys out to people, uh, and here's a, a, some of the different ones that we've done uh, where we've asked people to give us their input on, on wish list items. Uh, and that's something that gets on the list. So what do we do after you've made a suggestion? Um, now, you'd love to think that whatever you say, we'll just jump on immediately. But what we try to do is gather suggestions. We do have a wish list. Um, table, a, a chart that we write those down on, and basically every couple of three months we'll sit down, review the, the different ideas, and the two biggest things are, number one, how many customers will benefit from this idea? Is this something that we think is going to have some widespread benefit? And then certainly the other one is, will it break anything? 
we certainly don't want to implement a new feature that messes up stuff. Now, some of you may say, well, you've done that in the past, but uh, we try not to. That actually is not behavior we'd like to do. And so based on that, then it will go into the development list. So uh, what happens after that? Well, it may, you might actually have your wish already come true. How do you know that? Well, you can go to the forum again and look at student manager updates. And again, one of the things about the forum is that, and when I land on the forum, here we go. When you land on the forum, you can actually go into student manager updates and get, once you register for the forum, you can get an automatic notification whenever a new release is posted. And you'll see here, these are all the releases that have been posted in 8.0. Lots of things being added, little little quirkiness being fixed in that brand new release. So right now we're at release number 16. You can click on the release note and be able to see the bugs fixed and the new features that uh, are added in that particular in that particular version. Um, some of you who have been around a student manager a long time know that we used to have what we called a new goodie sheet. <clears throat> and you'll note this is one from back in the 7.2 days, which is a couple of three years ago, where we would write down and make notes about what was going on. And you'll also note in here that we'd, sometimes we'd highlight who the, who the customer was that represented that. And so that was kind of a big... Uh, you know, a, a badge would be if you could get your name into the uh, the customer list. New customer from Seattle. We had Kimberly's uh, Virginia user ask for this. So again, um, I'll see if maybe we can get Matthew if on some of those some of these uh, new features. If those are recommended by a customer, you could put in a little shout out to the customer that uh, had recommended that. So. So that is how you find out whether or not my, your idea was selected. Uh, some examples here, a couple of things that we've added were number one is financial aid module and the credential module. And before we talk about the brand newest one, uh, Lori, I think you've got a poll that you want to ask for people about whether they're using financial aid or credentials at this point. So I do. And you only get to vote once, but we ask that everybody vote. So are you using either the financial aid module or the credential screen? So watching the results come in. Nobody else can see this but me. OK, so, as they start to <laughs> fill in. So. <laughs> yeah, as they start to fill in. So that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. All righty, I think we've got a, yeah, almost everybody has voted. Very good. So I will close it and I will launch the results. There you go. So not very many people here today using the financial aid module, although I have right. quite a few customers that are using it. Yeah, so, we don't have many of the uh, tech schools in on the session today. That's one that, uh, that has uh, the results on that. So. All right. Well, um, and and Lori, I'm not able to see the view. So what is? Here we go. Don't use either one. We've got a few that use credentials. Very good. Well, uh, the the one thing about credentials, and again, in version 8.0, is the ability to customize the view of the credential here at the top part. So that's something that, in my opinion, really does enhance the credential ability. So now, drum roll. The newest module is the SMS text messaging module. I think uh, there was a notice about that in the newsletter this past month. Uh, but basically what that allows you to do is send a SMS text to students. And that can be used, and I don't know that I've got a demo, and I don't have a demo up <clears throat> to, be able to, to be able to fire to that. But that uh, the ability to let you whether it's in class notifications for like the upcoming class option, rather than emailing, you can send them a text. And certainly in like the emergency notification where you're canceling class because of weather, 
in the Northeast, if you were in Massachusetts, you have been canceling classes this week. So um, to be able to communicate with students on the new via text messaging. Um, all right, so that's the new modules on. Kind of want to move now into the idea of some add-ons. These are elements that if you don't have them, uh, they're, they're available. One is the report wizard. And again, the kind of things, uh, we've got a few people, I think, that do have the report wizard on here. But the idea is that it gives you another way of generating reports, kind of integrates in to manager. You still can use the existing report writer, but this gives you a brand new set of tools. The big things that I think the report wizard offers are the um, schedule delivery of reports via email. And that is, to me, a huge thing. If you've got people who really want reports delivered at a certain time every week, recurring reports, you can schedule those and have them automatically sent to whoever is supposed to get those. Uh, being able to build your own custom dashboards. Again, that's probably another big one. Uh, can build private dashboards for different staff. And then certainly the other one, I think, is charts and graphs. It's got some other uh, nice tools to really give you some, some more options for charts and graphs. <clears throat> that is a 1495 module. It is some, that's an add-on. It's not a module. It's a plug-in, I guess. Uh, and again, we'd offer you guys a, a test drive if you want to work with it for three, four months. Um, we would be willing to let you work with you on that. Uh, there is a webinar on that. We've got a couple of webinars in Webinar Archive that talks about the report wizard. Uh, wish list example, and, and I'm going to ask you to look at this. You say, well, that looks kind of familiar, but you know, well, there's, some, there's some new stuff there. Uh, we've had a couple customers say, you know, those screens are looking, the data entry screens are looking a little bit dated. Is there a way to freshen them up? Well, Matthew was doing some work and came up with some icons that we could put down there. This is a prototype. We're, we're not doing this yet, so don't, don't freak out. But I guess I'd kind of like to know what you think about that. And Lori, do we have a poll for this while well, people are kind of eyeballing this? We do. We have a poll for everything and for everything. A poll everything today. and everything. <laughs> All right, well, let's bring up this poll and ask you what your opinion is. <laughs> yeah, what do you, what do you think? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, and again, honestly, I, I got to tell you, you guys who have used the system kind of know where the buttons are and are okay. Part of the dilemma is that obviously, for marketing purposes, for new folks, uh, for new folks coming in uh, or people looking at the system, um, the idea of using icons down there is probably a bit more of a contemporary design than uh, the button buttons that we have had in the past. So anyway, um, yeah, we've got it. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> I, I, I'm following the, the results as well, Laura. It's interesting. So <laughs> yeah. uh, interesting mix here. All right, well, give it uh, five more seconds. Come on, make up your minds. Five, four, three, two, one. So <laughs> interesting split. Interesting split here on that. We had a lot of people changing their mind. The numbers were floating up and down. Um, so anyway, but this are. show yeah, show the results. Show show people what what they, you know. Yeah, and we again, need to go I, back and work on this. <laughs> <laughs> Lori has a couple of a couple of ideas on that, uh, but yeah, and so and while we're on this again, that's the kind of thing that we're really saying. Hey. <clears throat> Now, maybe you think if it's fine, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But if you've got users, and maybe the big deal is you're trying to train a new user on how to run or use registrations and names, and they ask you a question, why doesn't blah? And rather than saying, well, that's just the way it is, they, you know, ask yourself, well, is that a logical question? And yeah, would that be something that the Aceware folks could do? that's Matthew, uh, could do, that would make a lot more sense or make it easier to flow uh, in the system. And that's where we want you to call, write, send us a, uh, send us a letter, 
carrier pigeon, smoke signals, we'll take it, Morse code, we'll take it any way we can. So, all right, thanks guys. Um, new features on AceWeb, <clears throat> and again, in terms of wish list items, uh, a couple of things uh, for you to be aware of. Uh, paying balances online. This has actually been a feature that's been on for several months now, uh, where a student could go in and pay a balance due online via credit card. What's new is that you now have the ability to be able to allow uh, students to pay individual invoices online. And you say, well, what's the difference? In the previous model, the old one, they, if there was a balance due on a program, they had to pay the full amount. If you allowed, for instance, uh, monthly billing or split billing where you say, I want this student wants to be able to have three different invoices, uh, one a month for the next three months to split the payment into three parts, you can have these set up so that the only bills that appear on that student's history are the invoices that have been posted uh, and have not been paid yet. <clears throat> so that it allows the student to be making, if you would, more like monthly payments. And if you're doing recurring things like maybe a child care program or a monthly fitness kind of model, membership model that might have some monthly or quarterly payments, this type of system would actually be handy. Um, this, by the way, is on the demo, uh, the AceWeb demo. I guess it's actually on my model because um, uh, I guess you'd have to log in as me in order to see that. I think Cheryl may have, uh, am I on here? Let me get to the website. Come on, uh, wrong website. Um, now I'll, I'll get to it in a bit here. Um, <clears throat> it may be on the examples. We'll come back to that. Course deposits. This is, uh, again, a feature that's been in AceWeb for uh, really quite a while, maybe over a year now. But if you've got things like camps or tours where they're a really high dollar, 375 is something, oh, it's not so bad. But if you had a you know thousand dollars, a twenty-five hundred dollar tour, a cruise or a, a two-week tour, you could allow people to make a deposit, and then the system will automatically create a bill for the balance, and you can work with uh, sending an invoice before the class or sending out a payment plan for those particular students. Um, SQL upgrade, and again, this is something we've had in the works for quite a while. We are now, I think, the ACE web component is ready, and so we are looking at uh, making that available to people the end of the week here, that we'll have the SQL upgrade available for you to begin to work with. And again, that's a $3,000 upgrade, and it's basically, functionally, it is identical to what your student manager, FoxPro, does. It's just that it would be on a SQL Server database, and if your IT people would like that better or your tech people would like that better, that is an option for you. Um, purchase student manager before 2009. Um, you would not have some of these new modules that are out there. And, of course, the type of modules we're talking about are packaging, BOGO, calendar, attendance module, these are ones that <clears throat> are, are added cost modules. Um, the other thing about Student Manager before 09 was that we did not bundle a lot of what we call the common modules with Manager before then. And so how do you know if you've got all the modules? I'm, I'm looking at the attendees. Most of you probably have most of them by now. But if you would go to your uh, main menu, click on About Student Manager, you'll then get the system information, and over in the lower right, it'll say Optional Modules. That will bring up a module reporter, and the module reporter then allows you to see what is checked over here. So this particular demo has everything on it except credit card processing, extended credit, and correspondence. Some of these modules were fee-based, for instance, financial aid, 
is basically if you're going to use it, we can give we'll give you the tool you need. Uh, most of the others were optional cost modules before 2009. For instance, Ledger, Builder, Workshop, Faculty, CRM, Budget, and Email were all optional modules prior to 2009. Well, since 2009, we kind of bundled them all in. But basically, this allows you to see what your system has on and then what you're missing. And if you're looking at this, if you click on the button, now this is the slide, not live, but if you click on the button, you'll actually get a description of what that module includes. All right, I'm going to ask questions on this, uh, the, the idea of the module reporter. And again, it's, you may not know you, you even had those. And so certainly looking at the description of that would be, well, I guess I can, I can do it right here. Help about student manager modules. So if you click on the, the description, it will tell you what it is that particular module covers. Lori, any questions? I, I'm stopped for a breath to ask if there's any questions going on. No, you're just fine so far. We're going to be able to we'll, we'll scoot through here. So we've got this, and I've somehow I've gotten into the loop on this. Come on, get out of this. There we go. I must have four screens that were duplicated. How can we help? Well, the idea is uh, one of the other things about your website, and again, these are a couple of premium service elements. Is and, and I was looking at websites recently, and I really, um, uh, a lot of you that have had AceWeb for a long time, you've inherited AceWeb, you probably would benefit from some extra help. Now, you can certainly do that by going through the help guide, uh, going through the AceWeb technical manual, which is on the website, or we do offer a service called Fitness Consultation. Uh, or a fitness update. And basically what we'll do is have one of our web gurus, uh, generally that's Cheryl and Lindsay, basically work with your web person or work with whoever's kind of your keeper of the flame and update your templates, make sure you've got all the new features added, the advanced search mode, uh, maybe optional displays of data. <clears throat> and again, you can see, are you using some of the features that are in there, but maybe you've just never done? Uh, the idea of the related course, uh, Google location maps, being able to show what a map looks like. Um, and again, um, express red pages. There are lots of options available to AceWeb, and it's really, you know, could you benefit from those? And again, if you don't have the time to invest in doing this yourself, it's, I think of it as, I guess, as a trainer. Uh, you know, if you can't get to the gym and do the work yourself and you want to hire a trainer for a short process to buff you up, uh, unlike the trainer, I guess, if we do the fitness consultation, uh, you get to keep that and, and you don't have to come back every month to keep working out. How's that, Lori? See, this is a lazy fitness person's way to get your website up to date. It would be nice I've if we could do that. with analogies, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> you have done better I, I, analogies. Yeah, I'm going to call yeah. you on that one. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. All right. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, and again, check it out at tryaceweb.com. And and if you haven't been to this site, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you there if I can get to the right website. Here we go. Um, on if if you go to aceware.com, under demos is the aceweb demo, which is the tryaceweb.com reason why I want to highlight that for you is that the demo actually has a number of examples of things to show you what you can do. For instance, um, here is an example of the idea of, of being able to put on your main page classes that are coming up in the next week. So you can actually set up a way that every week it will just show classes that are still open, have space in the class, but are coming up right away. So this is kind of the register now. This is hot popping hot pop stuff. Um, user display options, uh, special offer group, um, a, um, alternate ways to display your classes, standard, table, custom, location, calendar. So again, navigate through those. Um, if you 
just do the all courses, you'll see that we've got listings of programs. Uh, for instance, this illustrates the ability to do the not currently scheduled classes. Uh, and this is a feature that allows you to say, here's a class that's not scheduled, but if you wanted to have someone, you wanted to post it to people so they know that you can do this, you basically allow a click to it and says there are no sessions and you get to edit the, the verbiage. Sign up to be notified when this course is available. So if you're excited about this class, you'd put in your email here and it says here's a record, submit request, submit request, and it will then put a interest code tag on that name record in your manager database to indicate that they are interested in this particular program. Um, and again, if there are other programs that are like contract programs, you can click on this and say, sign up to be notified or that you might be offered as a private contract. You actually can edit this kind of information. That's out of the catalog area. So you can define how that might be set up. The other thing that you can do with this, I'm going to back out of this. The other thing you can do when you're on the AceWeb uh, university demo site, go to examples. And there in the examples you can see, again, all the different things you can do with ACEWEB. Coupon codes. Packaging is an optional module. Deposits included. Included, 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 included. All this stuff is part and parcel of the base system. The marketing campaign is a new feature that allows you to create, similar to that course notify me when this course is done. But if you wanted to capture people's names for a interest either in your general programs, a newsletter that you might have, if you're offering kind of like I had showed you the new design of the name screen that we're experimenting with, that we could say if you'd like to learn more about the different designs of name screens we're doing, sign up for this list and capture people's names and tag them with an interest code so that you can you can track names for a particular marketing element. You're kind of pre-advertising a national conference. The registration won't start for several months, but you want people to know that you're hosting the 2016 International Association of blah, blah. Uh, so you can sign up for that and get people's names caught in. Uh, again, memberships, it's included, uh, balances online included, invoicing included, prereqs, proxy, BOGO is that optional module that comes with packaging. But anyway, uh, that is recommended for you if you'd like to, again, look at some ideas of what you could be doing with your AceWeb. All right, so moving on to AceWeb, um, the other thing is that the standard AceWeb uh, module did not include, prior to, I think, 2012, did not include any design elements. You were welcome to do any kind of add-ons and, and uh, modification of the design, but if you haven't, it's pretty much like this. It looks, if you would, pretty industrial. Now, for the web makeover service, basically what we'll do for 500 bucks will take whatever design you've got for your program and apply it to AceWeb. These are all AceWeb pages, but our design people, Lindsay and Cheryl, would take a design that's yours for your website and apply it to your, um, apply it to your uh, AceWeb pages so that the student, as they navigate, they're going to see a nice, smooth flow of what this looks like. So again, these are the costs for those services. Um, if you bought AceWeb in the last two years, you would have gotten that complimentary. I think most of the people on here have been around longer than that, so you may not have that. Fitness is 750, that's more configuring and making sure that you've got all of the uh, features turned on that you want to use. The makeover is a design element where we apply your website design to AceWeb. And then finally, if you do both, we basically give you a deal that's $250 off. So that is on there. So questions, um, Lori, 
Any questions? Everybody doing okay? I think kind of rolls us through. I have today. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Uh, uh, you've, you've answered, so you've taken care of them. But Rita okay. wants to know if we do the report wizard, will we still have access to our existing reports? Excellent question, and the answer is, of course, yes. The report wizard sets on top of or side by side to your existing report system. So yeah, you will not lose any of the reports. And again, uh, Rita would not want to mess with the state crediting reports you know, that you've got. But if you wanted to generate some other uh, different reports with scheduling or some bars and uh, charts and graphs, yes, you could add report wizard onto that and uh, come up with reports that basically supplement or enhance uh, what you already have. You're not going to lose your existing reports at all. Uh, so yeah, good point on that. Okay. And if we set up a payment plan for somebody, mm -hmm. can those folks then go online and pay their monthly payment? Yes, they can. And that is, again, I'm going to go into my profile. Uh, I, this is, uh, well, I guess I haven't logged in. Am I logged in here? Oh, add a new account. Let's go back. Log in. Here we go. Chuck, let me, let me, get, let me get up here uh, to show you. That. Okay, so when a student logs in, uh, if they go to my history or they go to my profile and they do my registration history, uh, they have current courses, completed courses, Payment status is what I said initially. This allows them, if they have an outstanding balance on a class, to pick a class and make a payment. But that pays the entire class. Whatever the class is owed, they can pay the full class. The pay invoice option allows them to go online. And for instance, if you had on this application development seminar, let's go back and, and show. Application development seminar is $1,000, but perhaps I got them, I talked them into letting me pay $200 a month so that what will happen is that I can make payments based on a specific invoice of just which, you know, however much you and me and the student have agreed to set up. So yes, they can pay that online. That is, again, by credit card. Uh, or PayPal, if, however, whatever you're using for a payment gateway. Uh, but yes, they can go in and pay that online. Good question. Yeah, uh, what else we got going on here? I think that's about it. Well, then, let's get a couple things. Number one, of course, a wish list. Hopefully, your wish list for 2015 is to join us in Myrtle Beach, uh, whereas we had grass and... Uh, uh, kind of cool spring weather in April in Myrtle Beach. We're hopefully going to be able to hit that beach uh, for our annual conference. Uh, remember, if you have a paid, uh, paid support agreement, you probably have a scholarship of some level on that, and perhaps even a full scholarship. Uh, next webinar, Lori and I were, we were thinking about topics, and we said, wait a minute, we ask people for wish lists. Let's ask you guys to vote on what you'd want for the next webinar. Again, we're not going to promise a democracy here, but we've got several options. Tell us which ones you'd like to do. And Lori, let's let's find out. What, let's get some feedback. Feed, feed, feedback. <laughs> what would you like to see Good. in our next webinar? Yeah. We want to talk about AceWeb, the new SMS module, some report writing tips. That's always popular. Now, can you do uh, multiples or just one? How are you have that set up? Just one. Oh, just pick one. You have to pick your most favorite. If you if you have two, then send a note to Lori. Or again, if you vote for other, then what? You send the text to Lori um, of what you want for another uh, topic there. Well, we've got lots of different uh, options. Uh, somebody asked about a particular module. Go ahead and uh, write that in the text box so that we know what the module is. Still got a couple people to vote. We want your input. Get to the polls now. Now, your constitutional right as an ACEWORK customer is to vote. How's that, Lori? I, I, I always feel like a PBS <laughs> fundraising announcer when we do these things. Yeah, get out and vote. <laughs> get out and vote. All right, I think we're going we're gonna to give up on a couple of people here. All right, three, two, one. All right, so let's hit that up there. 
And again, we've got report writing tips, SMS module, uh, Ace Web alternate interfaces, not, not quite as much. So looks like we get to choose between SMS and report writing. So, uh, and again, for the report writers, and I, I do want to tell you, uh, folks, 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 that one of the things that we've got in the webinar archive I'm going to customers webinar archive okay, under I'm, report I'm writing. You here. Hold on a minute. Okay, tell us when you're back. Hold on. Hold on. You're back. I'm back. Okay. Um, there is in webinar archive. How many are there? Fifteen to twenty. So there's there's almost um, three to four days worth of webinars about reporting, reporting tips, and queries. So again, um, lots of resources in there that you can go in and log on and uh, watch. Uh, the locked means that you have to have your user ID and password to get there. If you don't know it, contact your tech or contact the Aceware user in your shop. Um, and again, uh, for those of you that wanted report writing, uh, send a note to Lori with what about report writing you might be interested in, and we might just point you to a webinar, and, and, and then we'll work from there. So, Well, Lori, thank you much for putting this together. As always, again, we will we'll be typically, we'll, we'll, we'll review the results, look at the comments from people, and uh, get a webinar scheduled and out in the next uh, week probably. So you'll have that probably be the second week of February. So we generally do a two-week interval during the course of the year. So, All right. Well, Lori, again, thank you much. Thanks for showing up, folks. Um, I hope you survive the snowmageddon in the east, and we'll look forward to talking to you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye, everybody.